Welcome to the 3D Printing Canada CR20 Pro Build Guide. Let's start by opening the box and seeing what's inside. The standard kit includes an instruction manual and guidebook, a box of accessories, parts and tools, a spool of filament, the printer base, and the printer x-axis assembly. All of the important bits for assembly are inside our accessory box. Let's check it out and see what's included. We have an SD card and a USB card reader, a spludger for getting prints off the bed surface, we have the spool holder and spool holder mount, a power cable, and we have a tool kit and an accessory kit. Let's look inside the accessory kit. Included is a pack of M5 by 25 screws, the nut for the spool holder, some spare parts including a nozzle and a pneumatic fitting, and the M4 bolts and T-nuts required for mounting the spool holder. Looking in the tool kit, you should have every tool required for assembly of the printer. Included is a nozzle cleaner, a pair of snips, and a standard set of Allen keys, wrenches, and a screwdriver. It's time to assemble the printer. Assembly is quick and easy. Let's start by taking a piece of the foam that came with the printer and we're going to put one half of the base on that foam. That's going to protect it during assembly. We want to make sure that the x-axis is moved far enough up the gantry so that the nozzle of the printer doesn't hit the bed when we screw it onto the base. Let's do this by taking the lead screw and slowly by hand turning it so that the X gantry moves up the Z axis. Halfway will do. Next, find and collect your M5 by 25 screws. Notice that it comes with an extra. We only need four. We also need the appropriate Allen key. The only major step in assembly is taking the Z axis and aligning it with the base of the printer so that we can screw it in from the bottom through the holes in the base. The screws go right through the frame and will screw into the bottom of the Z-axis. Take a single screw and we're going to align it and put it through one of the holes. Don't worry about it getting lost in the frame of the printer as the holes have guides included in them. It's impossible to do that. Once you have the screw aligned with the hole in the bottom of the X-axis, Slowly and carefully twist it in, making sure that you're not cross-threading or that you're not over-tightening. We can do the second screw while we're at it. Before we screw in the second side, let's make sure that everything is right. You should see that the main cable assembly with all the wires is on the back end of the printer this will make sure that everything is clear in the front for the extruder to move back and forth. If the wires were in the front, things just wouldn't work properly. Take your printer and let's put it on its other side. This step should be a little bit easier. Now that the holes are aligned, let's take our screws and screw them in from the bottom just like we did on the first side. Now we can take our foam away and the printer for the most part is fully assembled. All we need to do is plug in a few more wires and we'll be done. On the back wiring loom, you'll notice we have three plugs, one three pin X, one six pin X, and one six pin E extruder, which goes to the extruder motor. Let's begin by taking our E wire and plugging it into the extruder. Next, take the 6-pin X wire and plug it into the bottom of the X-axis motor. It's always good to use a little tool here and put some pressure on it to make sure that everything is plugged in properly. Finally, for the 3-pin X end stop wire, I like to take my Allen key and put it in the center pin, which is vacant, and I'll use that to guide it into the hole. To finish off with a little bit of cable management, let's take our extruder cable and we'll insert it in the slot on the extruder itself. The last step here is to plug in the Z-axis motor. If you move the Y gantry forward, you'll see the wire and the Z-axis motor next to each other. It should plug in easily just like the extruder and X-axis. While we are back here, let's do a final check to make sure that the Y-axis end stop 
and the Y-axis motor are plugged in properly, even though they come in plugged in from the factory. The next step is to mount the spool holder. For this we will need two M4 T-nuts and screws, plus our spool holder, our spool holder rack, and our spool holder nut. Let's begin by threading our M4 screws and T-nuts onto the bottom of the spool holder. Using your Allen key to hold the screw in place, thread the T-nuts onto the bottom. Align the T-nuts so they are parallel with the 2020 extrusion on the top of the printer, and then we are going to mount the spool holder to the left-hand side of the printer. Turn the Allen key until you feel the T-nut start to catch. The spool holder should be held in place if that's true. The final step here is to thread the spool holder nut onto the rack. Before powering on the printer, make sure that the voltage setting is correct. For North America, we want 115 volts. Plug in your printer to a reliable and safe power source, and then turn it on. Once the printer has powered on, you should see the LCD light up, and you should also see the BL touch and the front fan spin up and do some tests. Before we use the printer, we must calibrate it properly. To start this process, click the menu button, go to prepare, and then click auto home. You will see the printer home the X axis, then the Y axis, and then finally the BL touch probe will extend and home the Z axis. Our next step is to set our Z offset. That is the difference between where the BL touch senses the bed and where the physical location of the tip of the nozzle actually is. Start by going into your move axis setting, click move Z, and then click move by 0.1 millimeters. Take a sheet of printer paper and put it between the nozzle and the bed. Turn the menu knob counterclockwise to start lowering the z-axis. As you are doing this, move the printer paper back and forth. We want to lower the axis until the nozzle starts to catch the paper. You'll notice here that even when we hit z0, we can continue turning the knob and eventually we get a negative value. So keep turning the negative value until it catches. You want the nozzle to be at a height that catches the paper and makes it a little bit resistant without stopping you from moving it beneath the nozzle completely. Keep playing with it until you're satisfied. Here we've ended up at negative 1.4. So we're going to go to move axis, back to prepare, and back to main. Then go to your control menu, motion, and we will set our Z offset to the value we had earlier, which was negative 1.4. Click the menu button, go back to the control menu, and then scroll down and click store settings. The Z offset will not save unless you do that step, so it is very important. After all is said and done, we can auto home the printer again. To be absolutely sure our Z offset is set correctly, we're going to repeat the first few steps of setting it. Go to move axis, Go to Z, we'll go move 0.1 millimeters, and then what we're going to do is take our paper, put it between the nozzle and the bed, and then bring it down until Z equals zero. When Z equals zero, you should feel that roughness that you felt before, but the paper should still be movable. If this is correct, the printer has been calibrated properly. If you find it too loose or too tight, you should do the calibration process again. Click prepare, then scroll down until we reach Preheat PLA, then click Preheat PLA. The printer will set the hot end temperature to 185 degrees Celsius and the bed to 45 degrees Celsius. Load your filament on the spool with the filament coming out to the outside of the printer Take your clippers and cut it on a 45 degree angle. Then bring it around and insert it into the extruder while pressing down on the extruder arm. Keep feeding the filament until you start to feel some resistance. At that point, you should see filament coming out of the nozzle. Being very careful not to burn yourself, remove the excess filament with your clippers. Remove your SD card from the SD card reader 
and put it into the printer on the side. You should feel it click in. To print a file from SD, click the menu button and then go print from TF, then we'll print test normal dog. You should see the bed temperature set itself to 60 and then shortly after the hot end temperature will rise as well. Slicing your own models with Ultimaker Kira can be fast and easy, but first we have to configure the software for our CR20 Pro. Go to Settings, Printer, and then click Add Printer. Under the Other category, scroll down until you start to see Creality Printers. You'll notice that there is a host of Creality Printers, but no CR20 Pro. Instead, what we will do is take the profile for the Ender 3 and rename it CR20 Pro. Add that to the printers. Go to Settings, Printer, and then Manage Printers. Making sure the CR20 Pro is highlighted, go to Machine Settings. Now under Start G-Code, we need to insert a line of code for the auto bed leveling of the CR20 Pro. Under G28, we need to put G29 and label that Auto Bed Leveling. Once you're done, press close, close again, and you should be ready to go. Locate the STL model file you wish to print and then drag it into the work surface. You will see it appear on the build plate surface. Now for some settings. Click custom under settings, and we want to do a search for the word temp. That's going to give you the temperature settings for this model. Notice that they are all at 200, 190, and 185. What we want to do is set them all to 210. The build plate temperature should remain at 60. After that, you can go back to recommended settings. After all is said and done, press the slice button. It will slice the model, and then you can save the model to your SD card.